caught me in an awkward position. Welcome to another Wonderwoods video. I'm working on sanding some cabinets down here in the bottom corner where there's a panel getting close to the floor. So I gotta get down here low so I can see what I'm doing. It's a big cabinet job and they just got their floors done right here. Nice maple. They've got maple cabinets that are about 20 years old and they're kind of orange. So they want them to be more like this. That's what I'm working on. This will give you a good idea what I'm doing. These fronts right here, I've sanded so they look more natural. These are the originals. You can see how nice and yellow and amber they are. Amberer, ambery, yellow. She didn't like that too much. So I'm working on sanding the cabinets and all the panels and everything else and trying to refinish this kitchen for her so it looks newer. I'm sanding on them with the with the orbital sander right here, especially like in these big panels in the center. It sands pretty nicely, pretty easy to do. But because these are veneer panels, and I can easily sand the edges off, I gotta be very careful on when I get to the edges with the orbital sander. So what I've been doing is after I get done putting the panels back together, getting everything set back up like this. So I can kind of see to make sure that I'm seeing it consistent. Now we're still in the honeymoon phase of our job, meaning that they're still happy to have me here. They're not tired of me sanding every day because they're excited to have their cabinets done. I've been this job at about 100 hours, so I'm gonna be here for quite a while. They're still doing a good job of feeding me, making me feel at home. And she's made me this nice display of C's candies. Little suckers. So the hardest part when sanding these cabinets, it's a veneer plywood, and the hardest part is to sand it evenly and not go through the edges. So, especially on these big panels, this is this panel when you, you walk in here, you're gonna see it right as you walk in the kitchen. So this one's gonna be sanded very pickly. Picky. I have to be picky when I sand it. Because depending on how I sand it. There's lights and darks in there, so I've been sanding it, getting it back, or standing back, get a good look at it, and I can see where there's like some dark and dark, and just keep focusing on that to try to balance it out. So, just a lot of time, sanding, stepping back, sand and step back, try to get it all consistent in color. Just got me a brand new Festool sander crazy. I had another one just like this. I was using it a minute ago and it just died. I don't know what happened, it just died. But we're going to send that back into Festool and they've done a great job. Uh, first of all, they don't break down really, but then they've done a great job when the few times that they have broken, uh, fixing it and getting right back to us. I think the last thing that we sent to them, they got, we shipped it, they repaired it and we got it back in five days. So. We will have the other sander fixed, I'm sure, and ready to go in no time. It's a brand new one, shiny and new. Got to plug it in. I got a close-up view so you can see better. This door, I've already sanded and sprayed with the first coats of sealer. I'm working on this spot right here, working my way up. You can see where this hasn't been touched yet at all. It's got the orange color. There's a little bit of orange in here that I'm still working on sanding. And then this is pretty well done. It matches this pretty nicely. So I'm just working my way up here. I still gotta get up here. I've been sanding the little detail corners with a reciprocating tool. I got a little Porter cable 
uh, sander attachment that goes on there that's doing a very good job when getting in there. And then I finish up sanding my hand. So we work on that for a little while. So today, and to be funny, my customer ordered a bunch more of these suckers. Now we got not only pumpkin spice, vanilla, chocolate, and caramel, we got cinnamon, root beer, chocolate caramel, and a few others, I don't know. She ordered a giant box. So today I'm gonna give um, chocolate caramel a whirl. I'll let you know how it is. I've moved on to sanding back here in the corner in this little nook. I've worked on the doors already and sanded some of these with the disc sander. See my sucker. But I've also been working on sanding by hand a lot. These little veneer edges, you can easily plow through and bend the edge over when you're sanding with the orbital sander. So these guys have been taking a lot of little hand sanding right like that so I can control it. Pretty tedious, but they're coming out pretty nice and light. This one I sanded yesterday. I just took it off and sanded it. We're gonna take it off now so I can work on sanding this little spot. Get this front edge right. So keep working on that for a little bit. This is super slow, but I really can't do it with the or with the orbital sander. I tried any power sander I tried wants to sand the edges, round the edges more than the middle. This way, I can kind of put all the pressure in the middle of that veneer edge and not roll those edges over. We saw Elvis the movie last night. Pretty good. It's a nice piece of movie making. I thought it was pretty. Tom Hanks didn't seem like he did, he's the kind of guy that would put his money behind something that wasn't pretty. So it was a good story and it looked nice. So I got In the Ghetto in my head today. In the Ghetto. Probably didn't need that, but it'll be in your head after you watch the movie. You want making a video, slow TV, sanding with Scott. I was doing it without a vac, so I could talk for a minute. But I've been sanding most of the time with a vac on, so I don't get this dust everywhere. So I just hand hold it there, and sand with my other hand. I need a third hand to hold my sucker. Chocolate caramel is pretty good. Tastes caramely and chocolate all at once. Kind of a little bit bitter for me, a little too chocolatey, but that's because I'm not a biggest fan of chocolate as I am caramel. Still a winner. I haven't found the one bad one yet. I've been working intermittently between indoors and outdoors, depending on the weather. Obviously, if it's nice, I've been outside like today. And when it hasn't been nice, I've been inside. The weather's been ranging from today basically a high of 80, which isn't bad, and not very high humidity, to last week 103 degrees, I think. So pretty dang hot. I wasn't outside much for that. I spent most of the time inside sanding. And then this past week, which is two days ago, which would be July 25th or so. We had a ton of rain. You probably saw it on the news. Everything flooded. We had about a foot of rain in one night. So everybody's been dealing with the rain and flooding and cleaning out their basements. Pretty much everybody I know got a wet basement. And yesterday it rained another four inches here where I'm at. Super nice now, but yesterday the backyard here was a big river. 
so obviously I wasn't outside yesterday. So I've been hanging out with my sander when I can, come out and enjoy the weather, standing outside. It also gives me a chance to get a better view of this because inside in poor lighting, I'm really trying to stand this consistent and even and it's, it's just hard to tell inside and, and it really changes a lot with different lighting scenarios. So it's nice to sand it out here in the bright light. I can take it inside and kind of see what it looks like. The results are in and it's vanilla. Vanilla is number one. I keep going back to it without knowing about it. I go in there, I grab one and it's always vanilla. So after trying all the other flavors, vanilla is the big winner. So I've got all the sanding done throughout the kitchen. I'll probably find some other spots I need to sand a little bit more. But now I'm working on the finish. And what I've been doing, I'm trying to match this floor right here. And the finish on this floor has a little bit of white in it. It's a water-based finish. They, this is freshly sanded maple. They had a water-based finish that they used on it, which doesn't really yellow or change the color of the wood much. And it's a sealer that they use on there that has a little bit of white in it. So I use that to my advantage, sprayed that finish onto these panels, but I also found out that they were still a little bit too yellow, yellower than this floor. So I've added a little bit even more white, a little bit of latex white into the finish to get it to get a little bit whiter. It's more of a white wash, but it looks really good. It blends in nice with the floor. So you can see that what I'm trying to match is this floor. I've got it down here on the floor and it looks pretty good. So I'm pretty happy with that. I'm going to show you how I've been doing it and mixing it in the products I'm using. But this is my test piece to make sure that it's coming out the way I want. And I think it looks pretty good. I finally got the finish the way I like it. I am using raw sealer. This is from Basic Coatings. The reason I'm using this is because it's the same stuff, the exact same stuff as the flooring guys used. So I know that the sheen and everything, the color would match. And it also has a little bit of white in it. So that's helping to kill the yellow that's already in the panels that was making it have a yellow cast. I also added some white latex paint. Not much, just a little bit to the finish. So that when I spray it, it's a little bit more like a whitewash. I was getting that with this, but I was having to put probably, I don't know, five or six coats before it ever felt like it was white. So, I skipped that and put a little bit of white actually into the finish and it's coming out really nice. So that's what I've been doing and it's a nice bright white panel now. You can't even tell they're old. Whenever I can, if I can put two cabinets together, like this bank of drawers, if I can put them together the way that they go in a cabinet, I've been doing that so that when I spray them, it's very consistent. I can spray this whole thing at once and the color will be super consistent up and down the panel. It won't be all of a sudden, if I did them individually, I'd spray here and I'd probably be darker here, lighter here, it'd blend, it'd change, and it wouldn't, it wouldn't match from panel to panel. So if I go here, even if I'm a little bit inconsistent, you won't pick that up because they're all in line with each other. So just dusting off, get ready to spray. It. working on the cabinet doors that are right by the sink and a lot of them I think every one of them has a little bit of the veneer that got wet kind of flaked up a little bit and then when I sand it it's just sanded through on the corners so on these corners right here they're sanded through and I need to kind of rebuild this color with some paint so I can blend that in so what I've done is I took some of my white latex paint that I had that I was using for uh, adding to this finish and I just jumped over there to the dirt pile. I found some nice clay Nice brown clay mixed it in there. It dirtied up the paint a little bit And I'm just gonna touch up this A little bit on the corners just to Start there
something in with my hand like that. It's a good start. I've got all the doors finished. It was like this. Nice, bright white maple. And now I'm working on the trim. There's filler panels here, uh, crown molding around the top. And I need to finish those before I put these doors back up. Now that I got the doors the color that I like, I am using those as samples to put up here to compare against when I'm spraying this trim. I have found, I put a light wash of white in there, so I found that when I'm spraying these, I need to put different amounts in different places. So this one was pretty white. The trim board that's up high is a lot more yellow, so it's going to need probably an extra coat or two of white. This one, I'm getting ready to do my last coat of white, and I think that'll match perfect. Right now, it's just a touch yellower than this. One coat should finish it up. You can't hold this up and compare the two right after I sprayed it because this water-based finish has a milky white appearance to it already. So until it dries, I can't really compare the colors. I know I'm getting in the right range, but I need to make sure it's totally dry. Hold the two together, make sure they're a perfect match. So on this panel, so far I've sealed it with one coat of raw sealer. As I mentioned, it's got a touch of white in it, but it's not the final color. So that basically was to seal it up and get me ready to go. I have switched over in my gun to raw sealer that has the white added to it. Now it's going to be the right amount of white to get to the final color I want in two to three coats. I don't try to do all the color in one coat because if you do, when you're spraying, especially on this big panel, which is the most critical one to see when you come into the kitchen, it's too easy to put stripes in there. So I try to achieve that final color with multiple coats. So doing it in two to three coats to get the final color will make sure that I get my overlap real nice and I spread out that color so you can't see stripes in here. This is a really tough spot to spray to get a really consistent color and not be able to tell that you sprayed white on there as compared to just the white of the maple. I keep a piece of cardboard with me so I can spray and make sure the pattern's coming out real nice before I go to the actual piece. I've just been making my way around the kitchen, spraying the last few coats of finish on all the panels, and I'm almost done. kitchen. Finally got all the cabinets done. Started out with a nice yellow amber cabinet and turned them into a nice white maple cabinet to match the floor. I'm going to show you some before and after pictures so you can appreciate what happened. And I'm going to move on to another part of the house. 